Now, will today's Steve Jobs appearance and all those free bumper cases actually silence Apple's critics? Michael Gartenberg leads coverage of digital media for Altimeter Group. He also writes about technology for Computer World as well as technology blogs and Gadget and Slash Gear. A longtime blogger, Michael has been ranked by Technobabble among the top 50 most influential analyst bloggers. Michael, good to have you with us on Bloomberg. Thank you for having me. It's a so, to be does, here. so does this draw a line under what they're describing as antenna gate? I think they threw a lot of cold water on what was a fire that was raging out of control in the media, on the blogs, and threw data at the problem. There was so much misinformation, so much anecdotal information, and they put some hard numbers around it. They said, yes, there's an issue. It affects relatively few people. We're seeing three times fewer returns on this product than the previous generation. Oh, and by the way, we're going to give free cases to everyone. Thank you for coming. So but when you talk about this idea that, you know, only 2% have actually returned the, the iPhone 4 because of some problems related to it, is it possible that a lot more people have the problem, either they don't know about it or they're just not bothering to return it because they figure, well, you know, these things happen with a new piece of technology? Well, one, they can return it because Apple said you have 30 days to get your money back, no questions asked, as long as the phone, you know, isn't broken. Um, we don't know what percentage of people are just returning it because they don't like the phone or having problems. But they said their Apple Care support lines, that was another interesting number, less than one half of 1% of iPhone 4 users calling in to complain about reception problems. So it does appear that Apple's data does back up what they're saying, that this might be something that was overblown. But the problem was you had very strange things going on. Consumer Reports giving it their highest rating for a phone, but not recommending it. And I think that's what caused Apple to take this stance, do this very unusual press conference, throw data, very strange for a company to say what the return rate of a product is, what their uh, complaint rate of a product is, to try and put things in perspective. So I think, I agree, they did what they needed to do today, um, and hopefully get people focused on the product, not on what perceived problems there are. Do you think that there's going to be a fix for the next generation of iPhone? I think iPhone 5 won't look anything at all like iPhone 4. Part of Apple's problem was is the way that antenna design is, you're kind of showing it on the screen, that little black area, it's as if they marked with an X the worst place to touch the phone. And that may be the biggest issue that they've had. They've showed other phones have similar issues uh, that have attenuation problems depending on how you hold them. Unfortunately, Apple marked theirs, so it became very, very visible, an easy way for people to replicate it, combined with what they said was some bad software giving you faulty information about how good your signal was in the first place. It was an imperfect storm for them. And I think that they did what they needed to do today. Um, and the question is, they've thrown a lot of water on the fire. The fire seems to be going out. Is it going to flare up again? Um, or have they finally resolved it and can move on to uh, other things? Michael, as someone who's an expert in new technology, what kinds of features is the next generation iPhone going to have that the current one doesn't? Oh, well, yeah, you know, I never try and predict what Apple might do uh, on any given Tuesday of next week, much less what they might do a year from now. So uh, who knows? Hovercraft, um, <laughs> Jetpack, um, perhaps uh, it'll whiten our teeth and freshen our breath. Are there, are there things, though, that you've noticed online that consumers would like to have in a mobile device that are not currently available? I think consumers are already inundated with features. They now have this new feature, um, FaceTime for video conference. I think what we'll continue to see is the evolution of the product, Apple adding new features over time and taking the time to explain them. It's interesting that all of Apple's advertising right now for iPhone 4 is revolving around these FaceTime commercials, showing mobile video conferencing, teaching the consumer about the experience. And that's what they want to do. Go back to teaching about the experience, not having to deal with PR problems. I want to thank you very much. Uh